This is Katherine Nightingale of Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for Linear Algebra Section 3.3 on the topic of using determinants to find area and volume. So this is really a good demonstration of the geometric interpretation of determinants. Now, what I'm going to do is refer to Theorem 9 from your textbook, which states that if A is a 2 by 2 matrix, then the area of the parallelogram determined by the columns of A is going to be the absolute value of the determinant of A. Now, we have to use the absolute value because area cannot be negative. Now the 3D version of this is if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, the volume of the parallelopiped determined by the columns of A is the absolute value of the determinant of A. Don't forget your absolute value because neither area nor volume can be negative. Now in order to use this theorem, we have to translate the shape so that one vertex is at the origin. And then the columns of A are going to be the adjacent vertices or vertices that share a side with the origin. Okay, so let's start by reviewing the shapes parallelogram and parallelopiped. So parallelogram you're probably familiar with. You have this shape and these two sides are parallel to each other, meaning they have the same slope. <clears throat> and these other two sides are parallel to each other. Now let's say for argument this is the origin, then our columns of A are going to be defined by this point and this point. So the two points, the two vertices that share an edge with the origin. Now let's talk about the 3D version, the parallelopiped. Okay. For a parallelopiped, we start with a parallelogram as one end, and then every side is going to be a parallelogram. Okay, so here's a parallelogram, there's another one, and then we have the origin here, and we have points adjacent to it, and then back behind where we can see, we have one more point that's adjacent to the origin. So here is our parallelopiped, and our determinant of A will be the volume, where A is defined by these black dots, the dots that are adjacent to the origin or share a side with the origin. Okay, now if we shade in the sides, it's a little easier to see, but each side is a parallelogram and that's what makes up the parallelopiped. So a cube would be one specific example, a special case of a parallelopiped. So it's a 3D version of the parallelogram. Okay, now in each of these cases our matrix is defined by the vertices adjacent to the origin. We might not be given a shape that already has a vertex on the origin, so we might have to shift it. So, in order to um, use the theorem, so using the theorem, the first thing we have to do is translate the object so that one vertex is at the origin. If you're already given one vertex at the origin, then you move on to step two. Step two is make matrix A from the vertices that are adjacent to the origin. Now each point becomes a column of A, but if you instead make them rows because you forget to make them columns, then it won't matter because remember that determinant of a transpose is equal to the determinant of A. <clears throat> so you can use rows or columns to use this theorem. 
And then your last step will be to find the determinant of A, and don't forget to take the absolute value and put appropriate units. So if it's a parallelogram, you'll have square units. If it's a parallelopiped, you'll have cubic units. Okay, here's our first example. We want to find the area of a parallelogram in R2 whose vertices are given to be 0, negative 2, 6, negative 1, negative 3, 1, and 3, 2. So let's start with our first step. Shift a point to the origin. Now, I want to see what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my parallelogram so that I can see. So I'm going to, I have my, my four points and then I just connect them with straight lines and I get my parallelogram. Okay, now I pick a point to shift. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick the point 3, 2. You could pick any of them. So I have to subtract 3 from the x and 2 from the y, and I do it to all four of my points. Whatever I have to do to shift that point, I do it to all four. Okay, so now what I get is the shifted points negative 3, negative 4, 3, negative 3, negative 6, negative 1, and 0, 0. So now the 3, 2 has become the origin. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph this on the new axis. So I have my y and x axes, and I have my four points connected with straight lines. So you can see it's the exact same parallelogram, so it has the same area, but now one vertex is at the origin. So I look for the two points that are adjacent to that, right here, the 3, negative 3, and the negative 6, negative 1. So these two points are going to make up my matrix A, and they'll be the columns, negative 6, negative 1, 3, negative 3. I take the determinant, remember it's um, down the forwards diagonal, so negative 6 times negative 3, minus the backwards diagonal, 3 times negative 1, so I get 21. Now this is an area, and so I want to specify it's 21 square units. And that's all there is to it, finding the area of a par parallelogram. You shift to the so that one point is at the origin. You take the two points adjacent to that. You make your matrix and take the determinant. And there you have your area. Okay, now let's see an example of the parallelopiped. So, now we want to find the volume of the parallelopiped with one vertex at the origin and adjacent vertices 1, 4, 0, negative 2, negative 5, 2, and negative 1, 2, negative 1. Now we're kind of lucky in this case because they already gave us one of the vertices at the origin, and so they've basically told us what our matrix is going to be. These points are going to be the columns. Before we actually find the volume, let's picture what this would look like in R3. So we have our x, y, and z axes in R3. And now I'm going to um, plot the points. So I have the origin, of course. And then I have the first point, 1, 4, 0. And then negative 2, negative 5, 2, and then negative 1, 2, negative 1. Okay, so these four points don't look like much until we connect them in the right way. So we want to make sure we're making parallelograms as sides. So I'm going to connect these in a parallelogram. And so here's my parallelopiped. The dotted green lines in the back are the ones that we wouldn't be able to see if we were actually looking at this 3D object. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in the sides 
so that, um, well, here first of all, here's our points 1, 4, 0, negative 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 5, 2. So those are our points. Now I'm going to shade in the sides so that maybe you can better picture what you would see if you were looking at this object. You wouldn't see the dotted green lines in the back. So you have your adjacent vertices. And then here's the first, the front edge and the top parallelogram and then the side. So this is what you would see if you were looking at this object from the viewpoint of where you're sitting. So that's what we're trying to find the volume of. If you were trying to use formulas, it would be a little daunting because it's sloped. It's not just a cube or a rectangular shape. It's actually slanted off into the page. So we'll use our theorem 9. We know that the volume equals the absolute value of determinant of A, and A has columns that are um, the adjacent points to the, to the origin. So 1, 4, 0, negative 2, negative 5, 2, and negative 1, 2, negative 1. Okay, now let's go ahead and um, go to a new slide. I'll bring this, um, for this matrix with us and we want to take the determinant. So it's a 3x3 three three matrix. We'll use cofactor expansion. And remember, when you're doing that, the signs alternate, starting with a plus in the upper left corner. OK, so I want to expand along the third row. You can pick any row or column to expand along, but I'm picking one that has a 0 in it because that makes a little less of a calculation for me. Okay, so I have the signs positive, negative, positive from looking at my matrix over here on the right. So the zero, I don't even have to worry about writing that. The two means that I will have the um, negative 2 times the matrix 1, 4, negative 1, 2 as the columns. Because I take the, um, the entries that are not in the same row and column as the 2. Okay, so I have negative 2 times the determinant of columns 1, 4, negative 1, negative 2. Now I do plus negative 1. And again, I do the times the determinant of the matrix that it does not share a row or column with that negative 1. Okay, so I have negative 2. I take the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrices and I get negative 15. Now I have to take the absolute value because volume cannot be a negative number. And so my volume is going to equal 15 cubic units because it's three-dimensional, so it's going to be cubic. And there's my result. So this is how you find the volume of a parallelogram in R3.